Hey there, creeps. This is Jimmy Haight with Hammer News on Super Creep TV, bringing you the news for the days of January 30th through February 5th, 2017. Now, let's fuck the chit-chat, provided it is a consenting adult, and get straight to what we here in the industry might call news. Ah, the perfect crime. Every scumbag on earth is looking for that job that's just gonna set him up for retirement. At least that's what the Teleovision tells me, and I am inclined to believe anything I see on one of them pieces of shit. Especially if it's something coming from North Korea, because you know what? I gotta say, Kim Jong-un really knows his, his uh, mandatory entertainment. Anywho. Now, the Royal Canadian Mint would obviously be a good place to get rich, being full of golden shit. Like, Canada's answer to Fort Knox or whatever, it's... That's just how I imagine it, and that's probably incredibly wrong. But, being a place veritably brimming with gold, it's also gonna have an expertly trained death squad of fucking... Mounties or whatever, cause it's fucking Canada. They're, they're all about their fucking death squads. I might be watching a little too much of that North Korea television, I'm not certain. Now, a felon named Leston Lawrence got a job at the RCM and made himself comfortable for a few years. Leston, Leston was just your normal, everyday chum, just smelting down gold, nothing suspicious here, just look the other way. Now, Leston, and I'm gonna keep saying that name because it is the goddamn worst. Leston, often left to his own devices in a dimly lit room with a single camera with gold just sitting around everywhere in literal fucking buckets. Now from the sounds of it, security in the room was pretty lax. It's hard not to get ideas in a situation like that. And why wouldn't an elite Canadian death squad totally trust a guy named Leston? Riddle me that. Of course, they may have been led into a false sense of security, seeing as how there were metal detectors everywhere, and those little motherfuckers are gonna narc you out in a heartbeat. So, you know, they didn't give a shit. And this, my friends, presents a conundrum. A conundrum that can only be solved by an asshole. Two of them, actually. Leston and his literal asshole. Leston took advantage of the lack of cameras, abundance of gold, and solitary nature of his profession stuck recently smelted gold pucks just directly into his anus. Now, this would set off the walkthrough detectors no problem, but they would also hit him up with the handheld detectors and they wouldn't go off. And, you know, being security guards, probably not getting paid enough, seeing gold just go in and out, they, they probably just don't give a shit. They're not gonna you go out of their way to go rooting through their, their co-worker's b-hole when they have a bottle of Molson and a plate of poteen waiting for them after work at the end of a hard day. Now, me, on the other hand, I would do it for a $5 bill. I have probably, to be honest, done it for less than that. But, Leston, our anal champion, got himself caught. And this is the, where the moral of the story rears its ugly head. If you are going to steal, launder that shit. Leston just waltzed into his local bank and attempted to cash in two checks for the sum of $15,200 from the Ottawa Gold Buyers Association. Pretty strange for somebody who works at, a, at the Royal Canadian Mint. So the bank tipped off the fuzz because they're not stupid. Now, after everything was said and done, it was determined that the guy stole 22 gold pucks worth $165,451.14 snuggled, 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 smuggled through the most personal of spaces. Now, additional evidence was found in the locker, in his locker, Vaseline and latex gloves. Pretty fucking damning. Now, in a hearing presided over by Judge Peter Duty, and I swear to God, that is his real name. I am not making that up. You can microfiche it if you don't believe me. 
It looks like Leston is going to go away for somewhere in the two-year area or somewhere around there in order to pay $190,000. And if he fails that, he could be reincarcerated for another 30 months. Now, this guy already had to sell his houseboat. House? No, it was not. It was not a houseboat. That just shows you how much I've already been drinking tonight. He already had to sell his boat and his house in Jamaica to recoup some of the costs. So boo-hoo, our blackened hearts are just breaking all over the place for poor, poor Les Leston. So if you have ever visited Washington State, you will know that that pla place is like the perfect habitat for the cultivation of serial killers. Just immense amount of rain coupled with the huge lack of sunlight so you get the seasonal affective disorder and vast swaths of lonely lonely forest i was only there like 10 minutes before i started getting the urge to put together a kill kit i tell you that much but you don't hear much about the place but it's the quiet ones that you have to worry about as they say now i'm only going to call the next the gal in our next story an aspiring serial killer because from the sounds of it she never actually had the honor of shuffling anybody off the mortal coil, though she really wanted to from the sounds of it. It started off as a Craigslist get-together, a connection through the strictly platonic section which, if all the pictures of dicks have anything to say about it, isn't that strict. And by the way, when are people gonna start, or when, when are people gonna learn that using Craigslist to find strange is just awful? I only had to get two venereal diseases on there to figure that out. Wake up, people! Now, the would-be murderess and her victim-to-be met at a Walgreens, then booked a room at the Rodeo Inn. Romantic as fuck! I'm sure he brought her a silk rose and a glass tube and a pack of Twizzlers just to set the mood! But before they could actually get down to doing the dirty deed, she asked him several times if he were a serial killer. Now, this should have seemed a little bit, like a little bit strange, being asses several times in between the trip from Walgreens to the Rodeo Inn. Maybe he thought it was a joke. Maybe that's just what she's interested in and she's trying to make conversation. Or maybe he dis just didn't have high expectations for his strict Pat GF. And by the way, ladies, this is a reasonable inquiry. But remember, if your date is a serial killer, there is no law in place that says that they have to tell you if you ask. Just to clarify. So quit fucking asking me. She straddled the would-be, uh, so, sorry. She straddled the professed non-serial killer and whispered softly in his ear, asking one last time for good measure, Are you a serial killer? When he said no, she responded with, Well, I am. And began to stab him several times in the chest with her weapon of choice. A goddamn pocket knife. Not a machete. Not a meat cleaver. Not even a fucking kitchen knife. I mean, I guess I, could, it, I guess it could have been worse. It could have been the sharp thing at the ass end of the toenail clippers. But fuck's sake. Anyway, dude man tossed her off him post haze and ran to the front counter where the desk person finished up their soap opera then kindly phoned the police. Now, presumably, a couple hours later, the Linwood police arrived and contacted the, the aspiring Eileen Wernos in the parking lot where her rantings had increased to a fever pitch as she exclaimed that she wanted to eat the victim's fucking heart and nary embraced her lunacy. And there we go! My court-appointed public service is out of the way for another week, and always remember, kids, there is no eye in asshole, and no news on Super Creep TV. Hey! We won't be here next week. I will be too busy doing shit that probably shouldn't be mentioned here if I value my freedom and welfare in the least, and contrary to popular belief, I do. But, catch us again the week after that! For the usual shenanigans uh if you liked our video please like and subscribe so if you have any news tips send a message to supercreatv at gmail.com with the subject of newsroom uh we want to very much thank our patreon supporter mary poppins and if you are interested in also supporting super Creep tv you can head over to patreon.com forward slash super Creep tv 
Check us out on Twitter and Facebook. And that's it. This is Jimmy Hate. See ya whenever. Oh